Welcome. I'm Judge Bernice Donald, Chair of the American Bar Association's Criminal Justice Section. I want to welcome you to this 30th anniversary uh, meeting of the White Collar Crime Committee. You know, it's hard to believe that 30 years have gone by since we've done this important work. But every year, for the past 30 years, the White Collar Crime Committee has put on important programs addressing the most pressing issues in white collar crime. This committee and this conference has brought together professionals, subject matter experts from all across the country and around the world to discuss uh, these important issues. Uh, the criminal justice section, because of the work of this committee, has remained on the forefront of white collar crime. It's hard to believe that 30 years ago, this was a subject that no one talked about. And today it is one that is at the top of the agenda for individuals and corporations alike. I wanna thank the many professionals, uh, prosecutors, defense attorneys, government officials, and others who come together and really address these issues uh, for the profession. You have been critical to the development and growth of the criminal justice section. More importantly, the expertise you've developed through this conference has been crucial to the clients who depend upon high quality representation from the subject matter experts in this area. I want to especially acknowledge the tremendous leadership and vision of Ray Benoon, who 30 years ago had the audacity to believe that we could develop this area and provide a service to the profession. Ray, you are a true leader and we're all indebted to you for what you've done in this white collar area. I hope that 30 years from now we'll come together again to look back and see the tremendous accomplishments in this area. Have a great conference and continue to do this great work. Uh, going back to the mid 80s, uh, there was a groundswell of public opinion that um, the prosecution of white collar cases should be a more prominent priority uh, for the Department of Justice. That changed everything. It changed how we spent our day because before we were getting ready for trial and now we were doing internal investigations and showing the government that our corporation could behave. Uh, those of us in little firms were representing the officers and directors and employees of companies and those in the big firms were putting together deferred prosecution agreements and monitorships and, and uh, really running the uh, internal investigations. And the stakes, the ante, was up substantially by the sentencing guidelines. So suffice to say that the landscape had changed substantially. Now, it was during this time period that the White Collar Crime Committee of the ABA and the National Institute on White Collar Crime were spawned and really developed. First of all, the first conference we did it in January, and we did it in Florida. So we immediately ran into problems getting, first of all, a hotel that was good because most hotels didn't want to be associated with crime, and so especially business crime. So they did not want us there. They did not like the whole idea of white collar crime. Most law firms did not have, most big law firms at the time did not have white collar practices for the same reason. They didn't want their clients to think that they thought that their clients were criminals. One of the advantages is that because most of those who were practicing in, that area, in this area at that time were all former prosecutors, everybody knew more or less each other already. It's just that they were now beginning to leave the government and go into private practice, and so they continued. It was a way to continue to maintain the relationships. The idea was also to make sure that the government would continue to get involved and, all, and also try to get judges and all aspects of the, uh, of the white collar practice. That's how it happened. That's how it started. This was the late uh, 1980s. And um, by then, there were very few white collar crime meetings in London. And so I really enthused about what uh, Ray Benin was doing. And he very kindly invited me to go to New Orleans for the second institute. 
And um, from then onwards, I found it an inspiring occasion, and I'll tell you why. Because the um, sessions were very informative. And so I learned an enormous amount. And I realized very swiftly that what happened in the United States today would get to the United Kingdom in the next 12 months. So what has it meant to my career? It's enhanced my career enormously. I've learned a great deal. I've made a lot of friends. I've networked. I've got referrals. I've managed to uh, find uh, specialist firms in the US to whom I could confidently uh, refer clients. And they returned the compliment over the, over the years. And I've made lifelong friends. I had been a federal prosecutor in Chicago for 10 years. And after that, uh, at the time I started coming to the White Collar Crime Institute, I was representing the misunderstood. I've been representing the misunderstood ever since, and have found this conference invaluable in terms of getting best practices uh, from other practitioners around the country, learning about major cases, learning about major rulings. In addition, more and more people are interested in the area. And uh, 20, 30 years ago, it was a, a much smaller group of practitioners who were involved. Now it's a much broader group of people who are actively involved in it. And this is the major continuing legal education program on white collar crime in the country and has been that way for decades. I have been working with the White Collar Crime National Institute since its inception in 1987 in Hollywood, Florida where we only had 43 people in attendance. We are very fortunate in the Center for Professional Development to have had the opportunity to work with Ray Benoom and the planning committee in the production and execution of this National Institute. It's been a great benefit to me to be on the planning committee. I enjoy hearing the contributions of people who, whose opinions I value about what it is we should be talking about each year, what it, what's going on, what's out there. I think one of the highest compliments a woman litigator can receive is walking into this wonderful institute and immediately having male colleagues refer business to you, exchange business cards. That's, that's the highest professional compliment that you can receive is immediately before the conference begins having that networking and business opportunity. It is the annual event for practitioners of the white collared bar. There's no other event quite like it. And it's not just the combination of the high profile speakers and the quality of the programming. It's the socializing, the networking, and frankly just an opportunity to catch up and, and talk to old friends and meet new friends.